My father's family came from Egypt. My mother's family came from India, and I was brought up in London, England, in a Muslim family. Uh, we would go to the mosque. Uh, my father was very strict in his prayer life, and so that's the atmosphere and the environment that we were brought up in. Um, even though we were living in England, we were still holding on to our belief, holding on to our faith, and um, uh, we would uh, uh, pray, we would, um, uh, what they call Ramzan, we would fast, okay, we would go to the mosque, we would have the Quran, we would have the prayer mat, and that is the lifestyle, that is what I was brought up in in London, um, fully believing that that's the only way to live and that was the only religion, that was the only belief that Allah is the only God and Mohammed is his prophet. I had it in my heart to to become successful in business. You know, as a Muslim we're always trying to find ways to become successful. Uh, we're supposed to become successful. I got involved in many businesses, um, many of them failed but I didn't quit and finally I ended up with one company that um, became very successful. I had attained a six-figure income. I could drive a car that I wanted, I could live where I wanted and you know everything that I dreamed of happening, it happened and instead of being excited, instead of being fulfilled, there was an emptiness inside. There was something missing inside and I didn't know what it was and I started searching at different places to find out what was it. I thought that if I had financial success I had everything but obviously there was something else still missing. And then I uh, met this young lady and she had invited me to her parents home uh, for dinner which was great and here I am sitting uh, after dinner talking to her, a mother and in the middle of a sentence I actually fell asleep. Now if you want to <laughs> make a good impression that's not the way to do it and I didn't know what happened. I woke up on the couch, I had a little rash on the side of my neck. I thought, what is this? I, I left and I went to um, the local hospital and they said, look, it's not a problem, just take these pills, uh, Tylenols, and you wake up in the morning, you'll be fine. I went to bed in my home. I woke up in the middle of the night, wanted to go to the bathroom. And I walked into the bathroom. As I stood in the bathroom, like that, I passed out. I woke up on the floor. I realized there was something seriously wrong with me, so on all fours, I crawled back to bed. And I looked in the mirror, that little rash on the side of my neck had grown to blisters, half an inch in size. I was in so much pain that I actually got a piece of paper and wrote my will. I thought that I was going to die that night. I didn't know what was going on. I called uh, um, this young lady to help me, who I just met, to, to drive over and take me to the hospital because I was in incredible pain and uh, they diagnose it as the worst case of shingles. Now what is shingles? It's a virus of the nerves burning the skin from the inside out. If your head was covered in uh, gasoline and someone put a match to it and there's nothing you could do to stop it, you know, that's the kind of pain that I was in. Uh, finally, they said, we're gonna have to admit you. They gave me an injection to knock me out. The next morning, I woke up with a temperature of 107.6. Now 104 is critical, 108 is death. I was 0.4 away from death in this hospital and uh, when that occurs it's called hypothermia. Oxygen doesn't get to the brain and the brain cooks itself. So here I am with a temperature of 107.6. Brain is cooking itself, the body is burning up. It feels like gasoline on the side of my head, burning up, there's nothing I can do to stop it and the next day I wake up I have chicken pox. Shingles, blisters, temperature 107.6, brain damage and then chicken pox at the same time. I mean my body was starting to shut down. Uh, this young lady that I had met who brought me to the hospital sat there by the bedside. Um, she was the only one that sat there. No one else would come in without gloves and masks. And every day my condition was getting worse. Every day they were taking blood samples and my body was not fighting back. I remember one day, two doctors came in, and as they examined me, uh, one doctor said to the other, there's nothing we can do, he's going to die. The very people that I had my trust in, my hope in, had now given up on me. 
and left me to die. Who do you turn to when the one, the ones that you're counting on to make you better said there's nothing they can do? I, I remember that when this young lady came back, I told her to leave, to go away, to forget about me. Imagine she never met me. I did not want her to sit in the room and watch me die. Well, she didn't leave. But that night, they called her out. They didn't know uh, uh, even if I would be a vegetable or how I would survive. And they told her that. But then they said, really, what we're trying to tell you is that he probably won't make it through the night. That night, I opened my eyes, I cried out to God, and I said, God, if you're real, help me. I was afraid of death. I, 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 it, it just was a fear on the inside. I didn't know what was on the other side, but I was afraid of it. And I cried out, and I said, God, help me. I believed in Allah. I believed in Muhammad, and I cried out for them to help me. I was in pain, I was suffering, I was about to die, the doctors had given up on me, I was desperate, and in desperation, what do you do? I cried out, help me Lord, help me, help me God. And I'm here to tell you that when I made that cry, something happened that night in the hospital room. I did not get a response from Muhammad. I did not get a response from Allah. But when I opened my eyes, there was a figure of a man at the end of the bed. And it was beams of light shining from this person. So I couldn't describe to you what this person looked like. But it was an outline of a man and light shining out. But I knew immediately that this was Jesus. Now, people ask me all the time, as a Muslim, how do you know about Jesus? Well, because the Quran talks about Jesus. Jesus was a man. He did walk the earth, and he did heal, and he was a prophet. So the, the Quran acknowledges that there was one called Jesus. What the Quran does not acknowledge was that he was the son of God. It acknowledges he was a man, he was a good man, he was a man that healed. So I knew instantly that this was Jesus. And this outline of a person said two things to me. And I couldn't tell you what his mouth said. All I know is this is what I heard. One, I am the God of the Christians. Number two, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And all of a sudden, this person, this God, this being that was in my room was telling me, I'm the God of the Christians. I knew it was Jesus Christ. And then he says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that meant a whole lot to me. Now, that's all that he said. Next thing I know, I'm awake, the doctors are examining me in the morning, and they said, we don't know what's happened to you, it has gone into remission, instead of the blisters growing, they've stopped growing, they've started to recede, you are so well, you can go home now. They left me to die the night before, the same doctors are now saying, you can go home. I didn't know what to do, I was still in fear, I said, no, 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 I don't want to go home, my, that room was my security, so I said, please, please, let me stay one more day. They let me stay one more day. I remember it was Saturday. They released me from hospital. Uh, the blisters were still there, but they were, they were not growing anymore. And they said that when those blisters fall off, I would have white patches all over my face and my body. It would look like I was in a fire. They sent me home with a care trail lotion, sleeping pills, knockout drops, all kinds of medication because it was still very itchy there. But it said it wasn't growing anymore. But I had one burning question in my heart. This Jesus that would come for a dying Muslim, is he really the son of God the way those Christians claim? Or is he just a prophet or a good man? the way I was taught all of my life. The next morning, I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Why did I wake up at 6? I have no idea. But I got out of bed. I walked over to the television in the living room and I turned on the television. And on the screen were these words, Is Jesus the Son of God? Coincidence? I don't think so. That was the burning question in my heart. And there were two men talking. They answered this one question, is Jesus the Son of God? And every question in my heart got answered. And the healing that had occurred in the hospital was an incredible miracle, but a greater miracle was about to happen. Alone in my living room, on my knees, in tears, 
they led me in a simple prayer to ask Jesus to come into my heart, to come into my life. 